Uh, dear student, welcome back to the, the same topic, electric charge and electric field. In the last video, we learn electric flux along with that electric torque. Continuation of that topic, we will discuss the concept like continuous charge distribution. This continuous charge distribution is mainly required to study the important concept like Gauss law or Gauss theorem. And in case of continuous charge distribution, we are going to discuss three important parts. First important part is linear charge density. The linear charge density denoted by letter lambda. It is the charge per unit length of a charged body that we denote it as lambda is equal to Q divided by L. Student, I repeat, it is the charge per unit length of a charged body denoted by letter lambda. Mathematically, we can write lambda is equal to Q divided by L. Unit for lambda is nothing but linear charge density is coulomb per meter is a unit for linear charge density. We can understand understand this linear charge density by using this diagram we consider one charger conductor or charger rod like this it having a charge q all the charges are located on the surface of a conductor by considering the properties of a charge and the length of this conductor is equal to l by using this diagram we can say that linear charge density lambda is equal to q divided by l is nothing but total charge per unit length of a charger body and the second important part is surface charge density denoted by letter sigma and uh, it is defined as charge per unit area of a charger body again i repeat surface charge density is the second part used to study the gauss law or gauss theorem and it is defined as charge per unit area of a charger body that is mathematically we can write sigma is equal to q divided by a where q is the charge a is the area unit for surface charge density is coulomb per meter square we can understand this equation as well as definition for surface charge density by using this diagram we consider one conductor it may be a regularly shaped or irregularly shaped conductor it having total charge on the surface is equal to q and total surface area or area of the conductor is equal to a by using this we can say that surface charge density sigma is equal to q divided by a that is nothing but total charge per unit area and third important thing is called volume charge density denoted by letter rho volume charge density denoted by letter rho it is defined as charge per unit volume when the charge is uniformly distributed over the volume. Again, I repeat the definition. It is the charge per unit volume when charge is uniformly distributed over the volume. And mathematically, we can write rho volume charge density is equal to Q divided by V where Q indicate the total charge, V indicate the volume. By using this equation, we can write the unit for volume charge density as coulomb per meter cube because coulomb is a unit for a charge volume unit is meter cube and by using this equation we can write the unit is coulomb per meter cube one can understand this volume charge density by using this diagram we consider spherical conductor it encloses a charge is equal to q over the surface volume of that spherical conductor we denote it as v by using this diagram we can indicate volume charge density as q divided by v is nothing but total charge per unit volume here important condition is when charge is uniformly distributed over the volume and by using these three important continuous charge distribution concept we can learn one of the important concept one of the important concept that is called gauss law or theorem it is mainly for electrostatics again this gauss law or theorem is also there for magnetism also and that we discuss in a coming chapter but again in case of electrostatic we call it as gauss law or theorem for electrostatics again in case of 
ऑफ गॉज लॉ और थियरम वी कैन कंसिडर एक्सप्लेनेशन इफ यू कंसिडर वन इरेग्युलर शेप्ड कंडक्टर और इट मे बी रेगुलर शेप्ड कंडक्टर ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ अ कंडक्टर वी कंसिडर पॉजिटिव चार्ज टोटल चार्ज ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ अ कंडक्टर वी डिनोट इट एज अ क्यू इज अ टोटल चार्ज ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ अ कंडक्टर एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन दिस चार्ज ईच चार्ज है प्रोवाइडिंग इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स यू ऑलरेडी लर्न इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स आर डाइवर्जिंग फॉर पॉजिटिव चार्ज converging for negative charge and over this irregular shaped charged conductor electric field lines are coming out and by using this we can think about electric flux electric flux is nothing but number of electric field lines passing normally through a given surface electric flux is nothing but number of electric field lines passing normally through a given surface in case of this charged conductor all the positive charges are located on this surface and over the surface total charge present on the conductor is q and by using this charge there will be electric field lines are uh, coming out and uh, that is leading towards the concept called electric flux electric flux is nothing but number of electric field line passing normally through a given surface and again in case of this diagram we consider next important part is imaginary surface to study the gauss law or theorem we have to assume one imaginary surface that imaginary surface we call it as gaussian surface in reality that surface is not exist that surface is just imaginary that imaginary surface we call it as gaussian surface by using this gaussian surface we have to get the expression for total electric flux by using this concept we can think about statement for gauss law or theorem for electrostatics according to this law the statement is the total electric flux over closed surface that is nothing but this gaussian surface we call it as imaginary surface is equal to 1 by epsilon not times net charge enclosed in that surface again i repeat the statement for gauss law or theorem is the total electric flux over closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon not times net charge enclosed in that surface here that surface is called imaginary surface is also called gaussian surface and again by using that statement we can represent the mathematical form of gauss law or theorem as electric flux pi is equal to 1 by epsilon not times q you already know q is the total charge enclosed in that surface and epsilon not is called permittivity of free space where epsilon not is the permittivity of free space now this is the important concept for exam usually for one marks or two marks they going to ask the statement of gauss law of electrostatics or gauss theorem of electrostatic i repeat the statement once again the total electric flux over a gloss closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon not times net charge enclosed in that surface mathematically we can write pi is equal to 1 by epsilon not in to q where pi is the electric flux epsilon not is the permittivity of free space q is the net charge enclosed in that surface by using this uh, statement we can think about the next important part to study the application part of gauss theorem three steps are used now it is uh, for understanding purpose it is not included in the theory to study the application of gauss theorem three steps are required and if you consider any charger conductor by using these three steps one can get the expression for electric field or one can get the expression for surface charge density and again here first important step is to study the gauss theorem or to study the application of gauss theorem we have to assume one gaussian surface we have to assume one gaussian surface we consider one spherical conductor of radius r total charge q is located on the surface the diagram is like this 
वी कंसिडर वन स्पेरिकल कंडक्टर टोटल चार्ज क्यू इज यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एंड क्यू इज द टोटल चार्ज लोकेटेड ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ अ स्पेरिकल कंडक्टर ऑफ रेडियस आर again to get the expression for electric field or to study the application of gauss theorem we assume one gaussian surface here this dotted circle or a sphere around is indicate the gaussian surface and it having different radius again here i already told over a spherical conductor the charge distribution is uniform automatically around this conductor electric field what we get is uniformly distributed or it is a uniform electric field that we taken by using arrow mark because it is taken outward because is a positively charged system and second important step is required to study the application of gauss theorem in that gaussian surface i already told you how to assume one gaussian surface around a spherical conductor in that gaussian surface we have to calculate the total electric flux here important thing is in that gaussian surface you have to assume the total electric flux remember that gaussian surface may be a spherical in shape or it may be a cylindrical or it may be any shape in that gaussian surface you have to calculate total electric flux and again from above diagram total electric flux we taken as summation e into delta s into cos theta actually you already learned the expression for flux pi is equal to e into delta s into cos theta where e is the electric field delta s is the small surface area theta is the angle between e and delta s in case of the spherical conductor we have to assume small surface area this one is a small surface area denote it as delta s i already told in last video if area is very small it behave like a vector is acting normally outward that is denoted like this delta s vector at a same time in that surface area it got a positive charge due to that positive charge electric field is also acting outward angle between electric field and delta s is theta that the theta value is equal to 0 degree by using this we can say that theta is equal to 0 degree again in this equation i consider summation reason is in case of spherical conductor i assume the small surface area delta s for entire spherical conductor all the small surface area added together you will get the total surface area by using this we can say that summation it is for total electric flux pi is equal to summation e delta into cos theta i already told theta is equal to 0 because delta s vector and e vector both are in the same line automatically theta is equal to 0 we got flux is equal to e i taken e outside reason is electric field around a spherical conductor is uniform summation into delta s where theta is equal to 0 i already told when you going to take a summation delta s is leading towards total surface area of a spherical conductor therefore summation delta s is equal to we got 4 pi r square where 4 pi r square is the total surface area of a spherical conductor and by u using that we get the equation total electric flux in that surface is equal to e into 4 pi r square we assume that equation number 1 and third important step to study the application part of gauss theorem is we have to apply the gauss law or gauss theorem according to gauss law or theorem we know that total electric flux enclosed in the surface is equal to 1 by epsilon not times net charge enclosed in that surface i assume that is equation number 2 when i going to compare equation 1 and 2 we already calculate total electric flux enclosed in the surface and again here pi is the uh, value for total electric flux according to gauss law when i going to consider equation 1 and 2 both are equal we got 1 divided by epsilon not into q from equation 2 is equal to e into 4 pi r square is from equation 1 we get 
e is equal to on rearranging the equation we got v is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into q divided by r square and dear student remember this is the expression for electric field you already learn expression for electric field is 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by r square that's why i clearly told gauss theorem or law mainly used to get the expression for electric field we got the expression for electric field further simplification when you want to consider or rearranging this equation like this e is equal to q divided by 4 pi r square into 1 by epsilon naught taken outside when you want to see this equation where q divided by 4 pi r square here q is the total charge 4 pi r square is the area charge divided by area or total charge per unit area we already learned is called surface charge density denoted as sigma therefore above equation we can write as e is equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught where sigma is a surface charge density and by using this we can clearly get the idea that electric field is directly proportional to surface charge density where surface charge density is depending on a total charge enclosure on the surface as a total charge enclosure on the surface increases surface charge density also increases as a surface charge Charge density increases automatically electric field over that surface is also increases that indicates that more and more now electric field lines are coming out from the surface that's why mainly Gauss law or Gauss theorem connect the relationship between electric field and electric charge density that is nothing but e and sigma both are directly proportional to each other in other words e proportional to sigma here epsilon naught is a constant for a air medium or vacuum medium that value we already learn 8.8 into 10 power minus 12 where e is directly proportional to sigma e is the electric field sigma is a surface charge density